Hello my friends, this is one Mark 50 my name is Mark, how are you? Today we're going to recycle this old wireless access point. It's a D-Link DR600 and it's got the huge amount of 4 megabytes of flash and 32 megabytes of RAM. And we're going to turn this into a managed VLAN switch. Have fun! This is what the final configuration will look like. We will have the VLAN for the LAN on switch port 3, IoT on switch port 2, and we will have the guest network on switch port 1 and the port 4 of our switch will go tagged up to the router. Let me start by logging into Lucy, which is the web interface of OpenWRT and as you can see here we are using a D-Link DR600. I'm using an old OpenWRT version which is 15.05. That's because the switch doesn't have so much memory. Now in a production environment or in an environment where you would be using the router functionality of OpenWRT. I strictly recommend using the last and latest version of OpenWRT, so do not use version 15. That's because there will be vulnerabilities over time. Now we are using only the switch functionality, so we should be fine from that perspective. One thing that is a bit confusing with OpenWRT on switches is that the port numbering doesn't necessarily comply to the writing on the hardware. Meaning, what is port 0 here in Lucy might be port 3 or port 4 on your switch. So find out the port numbers first. Plug in a device to every single port. You will see the little icon change to that cable icon. Write it down or write it on the switch on the router so that uh, you're always working on the right port. That really, really helps avoid confusion. Let me just add the VLAN IDs quickly. I only need three VLANs, that is one, three and four. I will however add VLAN ID two, which we will just not use, we will put it to off. And also we will add an additional VLAN number five. The reason I'm adding an additional VLAN here is if you're doing stuff with managed routers and with VLANs, you can easily lock yourself out. If you accidentally tag a port or you mix tagged and untagged and the hardware doesn't support it, then you might not be able to connect to that port anymore. To avoid this, I am adding a VLAN number 5 and I am setting it untagged to port 0 and port 1. So this way, whenever I get locked out with normal operation, I can still connect to port 0 or port 1 with a fixed IP address. The CPU ports should all be set to tagged. The CPU really needs to know which VLAN it is on. On the contrary, you might have ports here in Lucy in the web application that do not exist on your switch. Leave that port to off. So back to our VLAN number five, which we just uh, uh, generated. We're going to create a safety interface here and actually um, call it parachute and connect it to VLAN number five. That is, if we ever get locked out, we can then connect to that interface. We're going to give it an IP address that is easy to remember, in my case 10.10.10.10. And um, that should be a fixed IP address that is not inside of one of your normal LAN environment, of your normal network environment. This way, if, if really we, we lock ourselves out, we can set our workstation's IP address to 10.10.10.11 and then connect on that port number one, which is in VLAN 5, and we are sure to, to be able to connect to the web interface. So let me just create the other interfaces. I want the IoT network to be a DHCP client and I connect that to the VLAN interface even 0.3. Also, I'm checking the bridge icon because if I want to do Wi-Fi, I want to bridge Wi-Fi interfaces into that. I can do so later if I have ticked that box. So you can tick it at any time, but it's a good thing to tick it as soon as possible. Now please take a second to subscribe, that would really help me out, thank you very much. Just doing the same thing with the other interfaces. So I'm creating the guest interface and I'm setting the guest, the protocol of the guest interface to unmanaged. That means the guest interface will have no IP address and so the device will be invisible to my guests. So I'm not saying that anybody's trying to hack into my environment, but hey, better be safe. You could theoretically set it to unmanaged on all interfaces, but then you would not see the switch anymore from any network and you would not be able to manage it. 
Now let's go over to the switch configuration. And I'm connected to my router on port number four. So I'm setting all those VLANs to tagged with the exception of uh, VLAN one, which I have set to untagged. Now this works on some hardware, not on all, mixing untagged and tagged. Usually it doesn't work. It works on my Archer C7, but I don't expect that to work on that, on that D-Link DR600 on this old device. So it could be that it's actually tagging VLAN 1 on port 1, even though I have set it to untagged. On the other ports, port 2 and 3, I've set port 3 untagged to my LAN, which is VLAN 1, and port 3 untagged to the IoT, which is uh, VLAN number 3. So whenever I put something into switch number 3, it should get an IP address of the LAN range and on port 2 from the IoT range. I'm also setting the LAN interface to unmanaged because I don't really need an IP address in, in multiple interfaces. I have experienced issues with that. If you set multiple interfaces to DHCP, that might not always work. So it would be best advice to, to just um, assign a, a DHCP interface on, on, on one single VLAN. Double, triple check everything, that's another tip. It's very easy to, to mess things up with um, with VLANs and tagging. And if you logged out, of course, you connect to the parachute port and to the parachute network. So I just need to reconnect on, on the IoT address because I, I have uh, set all other interfaces to unmanaged. Now I'm on the 172 interface in the IoT network. That works fine. Let me go to the interfaces and check. Yep, IoT has received a, an, an IP address from the DHCP server. And the only other interface that has an IP address is the fixed IP address of the parachute network. So that works as expected. So moving over to the switch. What I will do now is I will unplug my PC and plug it into port number three and port number two and see if it gets assigned the right IP address. And in order for you to see that, I'm dragging in that terminal window here and uh, launching a watch command with IF config so that you can see the IP address I'm, I'm getting from the DHCP server. So I'm now in the LAN segment, that is the 192.168.0 range. So if I plug in, if I pull the switch and then plug it into VLAN 3, I should get an IP address from the 172 range. Let me just do that, quickly unplug. So the IP address is gone, the interface is gone, it should be up in a second again, here we go and it works as expected, I get an IP address out of the IoT address range, meaning I have been properly mapped to the IoT network on the tag port for going to my router, going to the DHCP server, going back. Cool, now let's do the same thing on port three, which is VLAN one. So I'm just pulling the plug again. The IP address should be gone any second now. You might take that second for subscribing quickly. Thank you very much. Here we are, the IP address is gone, the interface is gone. I'm plugging it into port three. Here we go, we get an IP address in the 192.168.0 range. And that is the address range of my LAN. I'm refreshing the page to, to show you that I'm connected to port three. So everything works as expected. So I can now take one port off the parachute network and actually Add it to the guest network, which is VLAN number four. And if I plug in my PC into the port number one, I should then get an IP address from the guest at network range, which is 192.168.10. Something it's gone, it takes a second, and we're back. And as expected, I have an IP address from the guest address range. So that works as well. Excellent. Of course, if I refresh the routers page, I should not be able to see anything because the guest VLAN is blocked access on the firewall to all other LAN segments. So I mean, if I just refresh that page, you can see this, the page can't be reached. So it works as expected as well. Now I'm just plugging back into the IoT network port, which is port number two, getting an IP address out, out of that address range. Cool. 
So everything's working on the wired side. Now let's move over to the Wi-Fi configuration. And just a little quick tip again here. Guys, if you're using OpenWRT with Wi-Fi, do not use an old version 15 like I'm doing here. Use the latest version because Wi-Fi has safety issues as well over time. Now I want to be nice with the neighbors and I'm setting this to the smallest bandwidth and I'm also setting this to one milliwatt, which is the lowest I can select, which is fine because the router is here on my desk and is lying really next to my, to my PC. So I'm just creating a Wi-Fi with uh, the SSID 1m50.lan and obviously bridging it into the LAN network, setting the security quickly, top secret password. Cool, so let's save that. And so we have one SSID called 1m50.lan on, on the Wi-Fi. Let's go back to the overview. Here we are, here it is. And let's add another one for the IoT and then later for the guest. Same settings, just setting a different SSID and of course I will be bridging it into the IoT network. And guys, what we're doing here has nothing to do with routing. So there is no TCP IP involved at this stage. This is pure bridging of interfaces. That happens on layer two, meaning that's pure MAC address things going on here, right? It's just bridging interfaces on the MAC level. No router required for that. Same configuration here, just setting a, a key and created the 1m50.iot network and let's just create the third wireless network and um, call that, you already guessed, probably 1m50. Guest would be a good name, I think. Same settings, just different SSID and bridging it into the guest network. If you like the video, guys, take a second, click the like button. Thank you very much for that. Quickly setting a top secret password here and then save and apply and then we should be up with our three SSIDs with our three Wi-Fi's here. Here we go. And that's actually a typical use of, of VLANs in the home environment, right? Adding a second access point for the guest network. Because you can easily solve issue, the problem with the firewall on one access point, but if you need a second one, you, you definitely need VLANs to, to route them through the network. Great, so let's double check here. We have the VLAN interface Ethernet 0.4, that's VLAN 4, interface Ethernet 0.4, and it is bridged to the 1m50.guest. That's perfect. So the guest network will, will be on VLAN 4. Let's check the IoT network, it should be on VLAN 3. Physical settings, Ethernet 0.3, that's VLAN 3. And that's the IoT network and the LAN interface, the LAN Wi-Fi should be on the VLAN 1. Check the physical settings. Here we go, Ethernet 0.1, that's the LAN interface and the SSID 1M50.LAN. Perfect. So the next thing I want to do here is I want to disable the Ethernet interface of my PC here and I want to connect to the various Wi-Fi's and see if I actually get assigned an IP address from the right range because that means that the various VLANs from my switch here are correctly Put through to my router and um, to the DHCP server running there. So I'm, my IP address is gone, my interface is gone, my LAN interface. So I can now connect to, to the various Wi-Fi's. Let's go for the IoT interface first. Let's uh, type the password and that should give us an IP address in the 172 range. Here we go. Perfect. Works. Now I need to set the, all the other interfaces under Ubuntu, I, I found that, that if you just try to connect to a different 
Wi-Fi, so meaning disconnect from one Wi-Fi and connect into another, doesn't really work. I, I, I haven't found out why yet. So what you need to do in order to work this around, you need to actually disable the Wi-Fi interface and enable it again. So you can see this here, I just typed in the password of the 1m50.lan interface. I was on the IoT before and it just takes for ages. So I will just quickly disable the Wi-Fi interface and then enable it again and, and then it goes very smoothly. So we should get an IP address from the LAN range 192. Here we go. Perfect. So that works as well. So the, the LAN Wi-Fi is properly bridged over the Ethernet to my router, over the tag port. Last but not least, let's try the same thing out with the guest network. Again, I need to switch this off quickly and, and uh, switch the Wi-Fi on again. And then we should get an IP address from the 192.168.10 range. Here we go. Perfect. So that all works as expected. Cool stuff. Excellent. Guys, so everything's working as expected. That concludes today's episode about uh, creating a VLAN enabled managed switch from an old scrap Wi-Fi router. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a like, please subscribe, share the video over WhatsApp and Facebook, right? Let the world know. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. With that, thanks a lot for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. Bye for now.